This was a history how the Republican Party evolved over a period of time. It is now my pleasure to invite Mr. Stephen Rogers, who is the chairman of America Winning Coalition and who is on the board of President Trump, I mean, election for 2020, to address us. And let me tell you this, he's a staunch Republican. Welcome, Mr. Stephen Rogers. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor for me to be here this evening. As you saw in that video, this was the party of Abraham Lincoln. It was the party of Ronald Reagan. But make no mistake about this, this is now the party of Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America. I stood up here earlier, and what an honor and privilege it was for me to light those candles. And as I looked at those candles, I looked at the word South Asian Republican Coalition. As I looked at those candles and looked at those words, I saw that the South Asian Republican Coalition will bring light where there's darkness, strength where there's weakness, and faith where there is fear. And that is exactly what the President's Make America Great Agenda is all about. This organization, your organization, a big, huge part of this great country and this great party, has the potential of becoming one of the strongest voices for the Republican Party and the principles in which our founding fathers founded this nation upon. But that strength and those principles can only come with spirit with commitment and dedication, a spirit, commitment, and dedication that you, that you in this organization and good, solid Republicans across this country who support our president are fighting for. Because ladies and gentlemen, we are fighting for every mile, for every yard, for every inch of what God Almighty has blessed this nation since the time it was founded in 1776. The South Asian Republican Coalition is embarking upon a great struggle. Make no mistake about it, folks, we are in the struggle of a lifetime, a struggle for the history, the future history of this nation. It is a struggle that is pitting socialism against capitalism, fear against faith, and good against evil. All day yesterday I was on the news. Fox, CNN, MSNBC, overseas stations, all day yesterday. I capped it off with a Fox News report on Sean Hannity's show. And on some of those stations, I was asked this question. And I'm going to answer it tonight. I have tough words on what I'm about to share with you, but these are the words that I shared before national and international audiences. This is my Marco Rubio moment. <laughs> Remember that? Yes. I shared with them an answer to this question. Tell us the difference between the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. I looked at them and said, do you really want me to go down that road? Because we're going to go down that road. I don't call it the Democrat Party anymore. It's the Democrat Socialist Party. That's exactly what it is. And I've told Democrats across this country, beware. The Socialists have hijacked your party and the next move is going to be communist. Because that's how it works, folks. I learned that through a wonderful, dear person that I fell in love with, Natasha. She's not here tonight, my wife. She was raised not under a flag of red, white, and blue with wonderful stars. She was raised under a flag with a hammer and sickle under a nation called the Soviet Union, the evil empire. She knows what socialism does to a country and to a people. And that is the road, that is the road she fears if the Democrats take control and the socialists take control of this country. For you young people here tonight, and those of 
you who are watching, whether it be on Facebook Live, whether it be on Twitter Live, whether it be through these TV cameras, know this, know this truth, know this fundamental truth of what is the difference between the Democrat Socialist Party and the Republican Party. The Democrats want sanctuary cities. They want to protect those who are criminals. Make no mistake about it. If you are here illegally, you are a criminal. No questions about it. The Democrat Party wants a welfare state. They want to enslave people by the economy, by keeping them low, far and under with regard to the economy. They want people to depend on them. They want people to be poor. They want them to depend on government to survive. The Democrat Party wants socialized medicine. Again, talk to someone who lived in the Soviet evil empire. They'll tell you what socialized medicine is. If you can get a doctor, it'll take you a year. If you can get medicine, it'll take you two years. The Democrat Party says there will be no ICE, there will be no customs service, customs enforcement in this country. The Democrat Party says that they want to reduce the powers of the police and they want to change the immigration laws to protect criminals and not law-abiding citizens. The Democrat Party, ladies and gentlemen, support the party of Lenin support the party of Stalin, support the party that has been invented and created and renamed the Communist Party. Ronald Reagan saw it way back when he was a young man, when he was governor of California. He fought it when he was president of the United States and he defeated it when he was president of the United States. And make no mistake about it, Donald J. Trump is gonna defeat the Democrat Socialist Party in 2020. And so I went on. I went on and talked about the Republican Party. I shared with the news audience that the Republic, Republican Party does not want, will not, and never support sanctuary cities. That is something that is a fundamental fact and right of people who live here, who have worked here, and who have come here legally. The Republican Party supports the right to life, the right to liberty, and the right to pursuit of happiness. The Republican Party supports the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, the right to bear arms. That is not negotiable. The Republican Party supports capitalism. This is what America is about. This is what the President of the United States has talked about. And make no mistake about this. And I shared with this on Fox News last night, and I'll share it as we go on into the new year. The wall will be built. That wall is going up. So the Democrats can talk about all the deals and all the chicanery and all the things that they are going to try to do with regard to President Trump. I worked at the National Joint Terrorism Task Force. I worked with the CIA and FBI and law enforcement and military intelligence side by side with them in Washington, D.C. during my naval career. We know what's crossing that border. We know what's going on. And you know who else knows? The President of the United States knows. And he had the vision and he had the knowledge and he had the understanding to do what may not be popular in the eyes of the Democrats and in the eyes of liberals. But he's doing what's right for the people of the United States of America. When President Trump gave his address to the United Nations just a few months ago, he made it clear he is not the president of the world, he is the president of the United States of America. The South Asian Republican Coalition is engaging itself in a great, great struggle, a great war. You're ensuing in that struggle to protect the future generations of your children and your grandchildren, to ensure that they don't live under a red flag with a hammer and sickle, to ensure that they live in a nation where socialism and communism does not exist to ensure that your children and grandchildren will hear the words of life 
liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And one important phrase, let us not forget, one nation under God. That is what the president is all about. That is what the party of Trump is all about. And with your help, that is what the Republican Party will return to. It was there once, it's not there now, but with your help, together, we're going to bring that Republican Party back to where it belongs. Amen. President Trump has led the way to ignite a light, a wonderful light, that's leading us to a renewal of what? To a renewal of what? To a renewal of a worship in God. I was at the White House several times, and just a few weeks ago, my wife and I were at a party that the president and his wife held for his team. And without fail, here's something you haven't heard, folks. Here's something you won't hear on the mainstream media. So I'll share it with you tonight. They talk about the character, the demeanor, the behavior of President Trump. Well, let me share with you that what they won't tell you about. When we're in the White House, we're waiting. We're talking, we're chatting, about 30, 40 of us. All of a sudden, the United States Army band begins to play Hail the Chief and comes down the staircase, the President of the United States and his wife, Melania. The President and his wife approach a podium like this. We're quiet, we're ready for his speech. And the President of the United States of America says these words. Before we do anything in this house, we will bow our heads and pray to God Almighty because this president knows that without the divine guidance of God, he cannot do his job. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing to know about the president of the United States? Rest assured, Rest assured that we have a president who worships God, who believes in God. Rest assured that we have a president who is dedicated to this country because he has put what? America first. All week, all week we're battling the news media and the Democrats over why he pulled troops out of Syria, over why he's making a difference with regard to foreign policy, and he's standing strong on the wall. He's doing it, folks, because he heard the American people. We're tired of war. We're tired of the Iraqs. We're tired of the Vietnams. We're tired of the Afghanistans. We don't need to be in Syria. America first. He's pulled the troops out. No more American blood will be spilled on foreign soil unless it's absolutely necessary. What the mainstream media and the Democrats and others fail to let you know or fail to tell you, and the President knows this, we're the most powerful military on the face of the earth. Within minutes, we can deliver any military weapons and hardware anywhere. So why should your sons and daughters be in a faraway land when they could be doing what? Serving our country here at home and using that money to build our bridges and to help with medical care and to help restore dignity and honor to this country, which he has because NATO and the EU and leaders around the world now respect the United States of America because of Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. Now, where do you think? Where do you think he learned a lot from? Where do you think we learned a lot from as Republicans who work with him as people on his advisory board? I'll tell you one place I've learned it from. The Indian, South Asian, Republican, Americans in this state and around this country. Who has contributed more to the economy of this country in medicine, in industry, in manufacturing, in building businesses, in entrepreneurship? Who has given more than the South Asian community in the United States of America. Who has done more? A lot of people don't like to hear that, folks. But that is factual and that is truthful. As my wife always reminds me, remember where she's from, folks. You couldn't 
You had no incentives to get ahead. You couldn't get a job. You couldn't do anything without the state telling you what to do. The state took advantage of the people in the Soviet Union. The Democrats want to take advantage of the people here in this country. But the movement and the strength and the light of the Indian American community, of the South Asian American community, is bringing America back and back with strength. Be proud. Be proud of that. I've seen many young people around this country, and I'm proud that many of them, many of them are still standing strong. Standing strong in a belief in God and country. You see what you saw here tonight? These young, wonderful, wonderful young people. Proud of where they're from. Proud of where they are. And we should be proud of where they are headed. Because they are the future of this great country. Principles of God. Principles of family. Principles of country. That this organization and the people who have joined it will be part of what? Part of a bleeding Republican Party. It will bleed no more. It will bleed no more because you're here. It will bleed no more because our children and our grandchildren are here. With your help, with your help, we can together continue to travel on this road this road of making America prosperous again, this road of making America strong again, this road of making America safe again, and yes, this road of making America great again. And with your prayers and your help and your dedication to God, to family, and to country, together we are going to keep America great. And make no mistake about this, maybe not in my lifetime, Maybe not in your lifetime, but believe me, in the lifetime of your children and grandchildren, there will be a South Asian America sitting in the Oval Office as President of the United States of America. Thank you, and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to Mr. Stephen Rogers. What an inspiring, inspiring speech. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Mr. Rogers served in the United States Air Force. He was also a police officer for a number of years. And having degree in criminal justice, no wonder that you are one of uh, President Trump's advisors for 2020. Thank you.